So as it turns out, Lionel Reichert and Hans Winkler are not just patients of the Edelweiss Institute. They are apparently backers on Kickstarter. So, thank you both. I appreciate you helping make this game possible, as everybody else on Kickstarter as well. I know Frogwares are the real primary benefactors of your donation, and yet, thank you. All right, when we last left off, we were not here. We had actually proceeded beyond this, but that's fine because I had a sudden and abrupt exit. I need to get back to where I was, which was this way. And this way, there we go. Oh, the document is gone. Okay. Um, yeah. Was it this? Yeah. Uh, all right, it was October 1879. As more serious treatment is necessary, my special patient, Wolf, will be transferred to patient room two on the ground floor. All other patients must be removed from my schedule and reassigned to other specialists at the Institute. This patient's mental state requires constant monitoring and immediate intervention to avoid undesirable consequences. The unnecessary surgical procedures were successfully performed. Oh, sorry, the necessary surgical procedures were performed. Physical recovery is still in progress. Memory loss is increasing but not complete. A new obsession with writing has developed probably as a side effect. Um, I'm confused on the dates. These are old. This is supposed to take place, place chronologically after 1888. And I mean, 1879 is when we were on Cordona. So even even by, even if we were to say that Chapter 1 was a Sherlock Holmes reboot for Frogwares, this is still wrong. Confused. Photograph seems recent. A commemorative photo album. Been a while since I've been in one of these. You sound wistful, John. You want somebody to take your picture? What here? Good lord, that's a lot of records. Okay. Is that it? Huh. I was a fucking rat. Um. I was kind of expecting to see something more significant there. I don't think I want to go out this way. That's the reception area. I'm going to bypass the patients. We'll go this way. Ooh. Reflection or the... Yeah, that doesn't quite line up with the windows, does it? Ish. The director's office. Ah, Dr. Watson. Just the man I wanted to see. Well, Professor, I'm surprised you're not trying to catch that SKP. Please, my time is far too valuable. I hope Nurse Kuntz has been taking good care of you. He has certainly kept me out of trouble. Professor, it is time for your appointment with your next patient, Mr. Wolf. Herr Wolf can wait until tomorrow. I wish to speak with Dr. Watson. Uh, as you wish. You still see patients yourself, even as the director of this entire facility? Only the important ones. And yet I rarely get to pick the brain of a man like yourself. I think it is time we got to know each other, no? I'm afraid there's not much to know. I'm just an average chap living a rather prosaic life these days. Dr. Watson, those of us who pursue knowledge are anything but average. Now, who are you? I am a doctor. I'm a physician in search of a stimulating career. I have patients, yes, but admittedly, I'm more interested in the cutting edge of medical research. So when I read about the Black Eagle Vice and your work on the healing of minds, I simply had to learn more. I suppose my Edelweiss was always destined to attract other curious minds. But before we continue, I want you to understand one thing. A broken mind can never be truly healed. Ah, I see. So... What exactly do you yeah, do? Yeah, no shit. Then what are you doing? If you cannot fix a person's nature, you must force them to forget it. Surely there are other methods of treatment. How naive. You remind me of a man I once knew. Professor Becker. 
but we do not speak of him. John, before. dude, play uh, a Colin. role. You just it's told him that, that told her you were interested. He that and now it seems like you don't have any idea what they're doing here. What? Already, doctor? Um I don't know what just happened to be honest with you. That was very odd. Um How rude of me. I was absorbing your wise words, Professor, and must have got distracted. Was my conversation boring you? No, not at all. I, I merely No, no. I understand full well. You're not seeking conversation. What do you mean? It is obvious. Your mind craves truth, but not in this form. You must witness a practical demonstration if you are to learn. I'm certainly intrigued. Would that be possible? Of course. I propose a journey between the jury of the human brain. You will not leave without being truly enlightened. I'm, uh... Kunz, take Dr. Watson back to the courtyard. Then tell the nurses to prepare the operation room and the girl with the doll. Yes, Professor. Our preparations will take a little time. I will come for you soon, Doctor. Gerda's about to get lobotomized, ain't she? One second. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. How to lure Gygax out of your office. Um, Gygax's patient reports, medical evaluations. Not, I can't really remember what that one was. Very important patient. Okay. One out of three ain't bad. Um, I don't think it's that one because she didn't move when the distraction was created. I don't remember what this one is. Unfortunately, the one thing that they're missing here in terms of the UI is the ability to go to the clue that gave us that conclusion. So there's no... Oh, wait. Is there? F. Read? Ah. It was there all along. Okay. Something macabre is going on in this asylum. Maria wooden crates are starting to block beat. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. So, a case of missing servant. Uh, come a full investigation to mass kidnappings. Uh, scratches on the floor near the wall. I don't think that's what we need. Working dumb waiter. Patient hates the car. I don't think any of these are the ones. We're, uh, the one we're looking for. Uh, old photograph. I don't think either any of this is what we're looking for. Um, I just gotta get care about Wolf. Uh, Note from Professor Becker. That's the only one I've got, so I hope so. Um, very important patient. And. What's this one? Um, was he a member of staff? From Professor Becker. I don't think we have everything we need for this either. Um, okay. Kitchen. Here's the dumb waiter. Did you hear that a patient escaped? All the guards rushed off to find him. Do, 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 do. Okay, here. Patient room two. There's gonna be Wolf. There's the exam room. Okay. Let's go talk to Wolf. Let's see what he has to say about being so darned important. Oh, beautiful alpine flower, whose heart I do miss, so you kill to me why I don't 
why I don't see how I could let you go. So close to my senses. I thought so blind with no captain. I missed something cool. Not green at all. Something square was at the same time. Okay. Yeah, you are Mr. Wolf. Am I right? Oh, hello. Who might you be? We are way too My close. Back up. My name is Dr. John Watson. I wanted to talk with you, if you didn't mind. Ah, Doctor. I don't suppose you could help. I, I seem to have forgotten where I am. We're in the Black Edelweiss, Mr. Wolf. It's an asylum in Switzerland, and you are one of its most important patients. But why am I here? That's what I was about to ask you. I can't remember. Sorry, I, I can't remember anything. It's all right. You don't need to push. Try to relax. Let the thoughts come and go. Now, what comes to mind? Mr. Wolf? Oh, hello. Who might you be? We... we just went over this. I'm sorry, but I don't think we were. We were just discussing this facility, the Black Edelweiss Asylum, and why you are here. That name does sound familiar. Holmes, the things I do for you. Excuse me, who are you? And who's this Holmes fellow? I am Dr. Watson, and Holmes is... Well, you could call him my imaginary friend. That's just a little joke, don't mind me. But why am I here, Doctor? Am I sick? I'm sure I can take a look. Observe as John for the first time. One side is paralyzed. Precise surgical. Oh, they don't look very precise to me, but yes, they are at least stitched up. Severe chemical burns, fade with age. Oh, is this Becker? I think this is Becker. Okay. An adult male with two deep surgical scars on the side of his head and an old chemical burn on one of his hands. Mr. Wolf has some paralysis of facial muscles and blue-gray pigmentation spots on his skin. These symptoms are most likely pre-existing, and his, admi his admission to Black Edelweiss for treatment has so far failed to cure him. Huh. Or, um, Mr. Wolf has some paralysis of his facial muscles, most likely the result of brain surgeries. Blue-gray pigmentation spots in his skin are likely due to the overuse of medications containing silver nitrate. It appears that his illness is a direct result of the treatment he has received here at Black Edelweiss. Um... The palsy is likely or possibly from a stroke. This is Becker. The question is, did Becker fall ill and then was then came back here? I'm gonna say that it's this one. That Gygax seems definitely like the kind of person who would absolutely intentionally lobotomize somebody just to get them out of her way. Dear Lord, what did Gygax do to you? Excuse me? Uh, who are you? Oh, never mind. Oh my god. Horrific. Um, pretty sure we've got this one now. Um, old, did we try it? No, we didn't try old photograph or it wouldn't be here. Um, yes, I fucking knew it. So that's one we just discovered. I'm 
trying to interpret his poetry here. So it's through my senses. Looks all my thoughts of mine. There's no captain. So, is this supposed to be a clue that... Because it said... The previous thing said that... Um, oh, he's been... His memory is impaired, but he still retains the ability to write. I don't understand the poetry, but is this supposed to be a clue that he can still write thoughts? Let's try it. Okay. He was back with this It's okay. Alright. Hey. Good guy. Write me a Hello letter. again. You won't remember me, but we've met before. I am Dr. John Watson, and you are Professor Becker. You were the previous director of this facility, the Black Eagle Vice. Professor, really? Actually, that name does sound familiar. Wait, wait. Let me write it down. I try to recall memories for writing, but they always feel just out of reach. As a matter of fact, I have more for you to jot down. Oh, yes. Yes, please, anything. Professor Gygax did this to you. She made you forget everything, even who you are. But we will play a trick on her. We will write a letter so that she learns her lesson. Put down what I dictate. Ah. Uh, does... Honestly, she would probably be more incensed by being called a poor director than by being cruel. So... Dear Professor Gygax, I bitterly regret that I let my beautiful alpine flower fall under your influence. I see now that you never deserve to sit as the director of the Black Edelweiss. You are not, as you so claimed, the future of the Edelweiss, and you never were. And by the time you make it to my cell, the police will already know the truth of how you came to be director of this asylum. Signed, Professor Becker. There. It's done. Now, hold on a minute. Who are you? My name is John Watson. I'm a doctor from London, a veteran of Afghanistan, and I wish to be a writer, though deep down I fear I lack the talent. And presently I'm risking my life to help my brilliant detective flatmate in the pursuit of a cult of kidnappers, even as I fear it may destroy him. I'm tired and hungry, and I have not had a good bath in weeks, and yet, despite it all, I... I feel alive. Any more questions? Good heavens, sir. You're as mad as they come. He's not wrong. Okay, so now, where do I take the letter without getting crushed by nurse cunts? One of the patients asked me to deliver this note. It's for Professor Gygax. Thank you, Doctor. Leave it with me. A letter for you. Unbelievable. Kunz, with me. The Night Swan. Letter opener with close, a but I don't think this is the key. Edelweiss pen. Mm, this is too small to be what Holmes asked for. Something bigger than that, okay. Uh six? Okay, that's a lot of clues. Um, 1879, it has been three months since I took over the Edelweiss from Becker. Not all my colleagues approved of the rule changes, so I am now the only professor here. No matter the hiring of several strong nurses will solve the personnel shortage. At last, my work can flourish without the impairment of his lesser mind. First payment has arrived from R. Our deal does pose risks, but the possibilities are endless. He's true to his word. The first shipment of Chosen Ones has arrived. R has sent a vast selection of broken broken minds 
The work ahead will be difficult, but undoubtedly useful. So on and so forth. Not that drawer, not that drawer, this one does. For some reason, that seemed to be worth several. Dear Professor, we listened to possession of a collection of uh, rare gems on behalf of our mutual acquaintance. The gems have now been sold to Louisiana jewelers, who made several officers far exceeding our expert's estimate of the stone's value. The final sale price we agreed upon the 11 gems was 12,550 Swiss francs. Our client has instructed you to receive two-thirds of the sum transferred to your solicitor as per usual. Jeffrey Scott, representative of E.W. Gray Banking House, New Orleans. January 9... 1882. Are we going to get to go to late 19th century New Orleans? Because that would be awesome. This is a stamp. An Edelweiss relief about two inches in diameter. This must be what Holmes was after. Really? Okay. Doesn't seem like it, but all right. Ooh. The Holy Grail. Hey, oh, she gone. Good. It's one less distraction. I just want to see the stuff I got. That scared the shit out of me. Um, Looks as if it's been recently used. Dictaphone. The new method at last started to show progress. The success rate is 4 out of 10, and the failures are not responding to any external stimuli. Nevertheless, the phonetic system can be declared an undeniable success. Regardless of their native language or place of origin, individuals learn to speak the chant without flaw. They learn it quickly and fluently despite lacking all mental autonomy. Regrettably, one of the chosen continues to resist isolation and deprivation and so resulted in strengthening of their disobedience. Negotiation only ignited anger, and even after the direct removal of the frontal and temporal lobes, it seems, uh, it seems all that was left was an innate desire to resist. Okay... This chosen one cannot be allowed to pollute the minds of the others. The conclusion is inescapable. They cannot continue to live. We will see to it they are sent to the well. Is that meant to be Kimihia? And Kimihia has been lobotomized with apparently no repercussions. The bank has the gems. My master has ordered me to send the first shipment of chosen ones. They will arrive within two weeks. Do not fail us. Professor, trust my guide, the light of the abyss, for he shall enlighten our chosen ones. Make sure he is present and that our chosen utter nothing but the sacred words. And lo, the trance will begin and we will be an inch closer to the universe beyond. Your work is essential, as many of our flock do not speak our language. 
Time is of the essence. It would be best to work in groups, performing at least one seance per day for a week. Of course, the most skeptical members will have to will have to be tamed by your hands. In the meantime, my work continues on a physical method to maintain the trance state through the emitted light waves of Khalid lenses. Finally, my men in New Orleans will contact you regarding the new shipment of Chosen. Make room for them as you have done before. And a key. Come on. I Come on. There's the well. Oh, oh, the spell. As soon as I lean over that thing to look into it, someone's gonna push me down there. Don't even. Judging by the remnants of blood and flesh, these instruments were used for dismemberment. Dear God, is that... body parts? Utterly inhuman. Gaze into the abyss. <clears throat> okay. The fact that there's a pump attached to that with a hose sitting here, it's like, who's pumping this water out? This fetid, putrid human soup. I know we're supposed to go in the middle one, that's why I'm trying the others. Oh, and there's another door over here. I did not expect to see that. It's a classroom. I have accidentally trapped myself here by knocking over a chair. There we go. Blood. A tooth. tooth of an adult male likely lost in a beating. Only a couple of days old. And a cared for tooth, so not somebody who is super poor. The inside of the cuff is worn. It's been used often. Smashed on the table. It's a, a wax dictaphone cylinder. recording. There is something recorded on it. Writing is mostly gone. Phonetic symbols, perhaps. Okay, let's go back to the dictaphone and see if we can play this back. Hopefully, when we listen to it, it won't drive us uh, insane. Last door. Uh, Boyd's. Dynamo machine. Provides electrical stimulation for the person in the chair. Yes, but how is this one operated? Are we to believe that there's a mains connection down here or something? Um... Full-grain leather straps. Impossible to escape. Is 
Hello, birdies. A very professional brain dissection. But why, though? Okay, I kind of feel like we need to go back and... Oh, okay. I thought we could open this door. Never mind. Abyss is the light from the abyss. Uh, get out of my head. Okay. Is there nothing down here to examine? It's hard to tell. So that just led. Okay. I don't see anything in here that's interactable. Um, and I don't see any other doors. No. A hydraulic elevator? How ingenious. Okay. Watson? Holmes, what are you still doing here? Still? I was trying to find more information. Did you think I was just going to sit in my room twiddling my thumbs? I only asked you to find the key. I had everything else under control. Says the man who looks like he saw a ghost. I am fine, Watson. You're hardly fine. You reek of congealed blood and chemicals. What did you see down there? Never mind me. Where's Gygax? I'm afraid she's over there. I found her like that when I entered. On my oh, my God. What? She was our biggest lead. Yet another wrinkle in our investigation. What do we do now, Holmes? Hush. Let me think. Well, let's go examine the body. Her... Oh, that's a patient jacket next to her. Her jacket is gone. There is Heidi. Oh my god, did Heidi do this? Heidi, how did she... it end up here? The patients here wear the same robes. The pencil is buried deep all the way to the brain. Instant death. No traces of blood on her clothes. Must have got on her white overcoat. We'd better inform the local police about this. You're right, Watson. But first, we need to determine where our case goes next. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with this, Holmes. I swear it. I don't believe you, John. You have a body. Trail of bodies in your wake. Everywhere you go. Okay, I don't know where we're going next. Um, oh. We need to figure out where we're going next, so we gotta do the doobly-doo with the thing. Okay. Where does the evidence lead next? Louisiana. That's where it leads. And if we go there, that will be awesome. 
Um, got a Galaxy's Diary. Telegram from New Orleans. New Orleans Bank. Okay. Um. Handwritten letter. There we go. Hell yes. Several pieces of evidence now point to New Orleans. It appears that the kidnappers have enlisted the services of the banking house of EDW... EW... Great. Um, all right. We've got what we needed, Watson. This conspiracy reaches further than we thought. I don't suppose you've ever been to New Orleans? You are joking. I seldom do. Let's go. There's no time to waste. Awesome. I am so psyched about this. Method to his madness. There is nothing in this world that cannot be explained with logic and reason. Nothing in this world. Holmes? Hmm? You seem troubled. I'm not troubled, Watson. I am preoccupied. That place was awful. Inhumane. It would be natural to experience some feelings of shock or fear. Men reduced to gibbering imbeciles, numb beyond recognition, powerless to help themselves. When a doctor does go wrong, they are the first of criminals. They have the nerve and they have the knowledge. That woman did not deserve the title. Such casual cruelty for such selfish aims. I knew another man like that once. He treated my mother, perhaps even killed her, depending on who you ask. My sincere condolences. In the end, she was just a shadow of herself. The outline of the person I recognized, but lacking all else, she was pushed until she cracked. See, I was curious about that. Sherlock did not make much mention of any of that she while in a sanitarium, cracking, which seems like for his character would be... I must ask you to intervene. ...more impactful on Nothing him. Nothing compels us to pursue this matter further, Sherlock. We can return to London. Report what we have discovered. Let more capable hands take over. Alas, there are no such hands. Were we to abandon our quest now, I fear no other would succeed in our stead. We know nothing of what awaits. What dangers lurk in the darkness? Nonsense. We draw nearer to New Orleans with every passing minute, and thus closer to the answers we seek. Those answers, for all their perversity and improbability, will nevertheless be the work of men. And that is a work I have studied well. So be it. I know you to be a <clears throat> diligent author, but if I may make one request. Kindly omit my mother and her suffering from your tale. Of course. Thank you, John. The Outsiders, Chapter 4, New Orleans. Ah, oh, Holmes, after our trip to Nippy, Switzerland, I can certainly use some of this new world heat. Do not get carried away, Watson. What we could certainly use are answers to my questions. I know, but you look exhausted. Why don't we find the hotel first? We shall rest when our investigation is over, and not a moment sooner. I shall ask you to handle our bags while I search for the bank. As you wish. Oi! Stop it, you! Our luggage! Good lord, what have you done? That's my stuff. I'm sorry, mister. It, it was an accident. <laughs> Let's see what John's packing here. What's up? Polygonal hat of some kind. That's a lot. I'll leave you to deal with this, John, while I go schmooze with the locals. Hello, bird. Is that a robin? It is a robin. 
Ouais, euh... Gemstone. Oh, there we go. Black opals being auctioned at the banking house of E. W. Gray. Hey there, Doge. Just want to see if I can get in here. Oh, okay. E. W. Gray. I did not expect this game to be a globe hopping uh, train. I did not expect this to have multiple locations, and I am really excited to be able to do this. Um, it's also a much bigger location than I thought. Um, I mean, it's not huge. This isn't an open world game, but I'm still... I'm going to have to find E.W. Gray. Try goods... Is that meant to be Chinatown? Yeah. Gun store. It's giving me sand and knee vibes here. Giddy Gator Bar. <laughs> Alright, let's go through Chinatown here. There's the banking house. Well, what's this? Any size for any foot. Um, only problem with this location is, much like Cordona, it's way too quiet. And I have the music enabled, so it's not a matter of not having the background sound. It's extremely quiet. Well, I can hear... I can hear the trolley coming. And it fades away. But yeah, it's very quiet. Alright. Mr. Frank Barnaby, right? Yep. Auction's about to start. Yep, that's me. How'd you know? Observe. Short sighted. Abe Lincoln Alive tabloid newspaper. And a uh, repeater. Sandwich in his pocket. The guard of the bank is a real character. Storing a sandwich in his pocket to save time while reading Abe Lincoln Alive makes him a critical thinker who questions everything, even truth. Myopia is a result of constant reading to the detriment of one's health. Guard of the bank is a real character. Storing a sandwich in his pocket while reading Abe Lincoln Alive makes the guard a paranoid fool with bad taste. Besides, the man has myopia. Okay, that seems excessively critical. I wouldn't say he's a genius, but this seems like it's a bit too far. <sighs> well, yeah, let's go with this. In the flesh. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, hold up. Written invitation first. Can I present another piece of identification? Nope. That's why we send invitation. Let me be frank, okay? So... Oh. Holmes, over here. Yeah. Any luck? None. They're holding an auction, invitation only. The good news is, I know who might have one. We need to find Mr. Barnaby. Who? Frank Barnaby, most likely a local. And you think Mr. Barnaby would be happy to share his invitation? Let us first find him, then we can see if he is the generous type. Okay. Gotta ask around, it says. We are definitely not ready to answer that. Hey, you, Keeney. 
May I ask for your assistance? My dear fella, you're talking to the rap man. <clears throat> He owns a shop in Chinatown, Barnaby's Hidden Gems. Alright, let's go into Chinatown for Barnaby's Hidden Gems. How marvelous, Holmes. A city within a city. Indeed, those lanterns are delightful. It is as though we have been transported to the Orient itself. I see... Oh, that's the gun store. thought that was a gem. Casino. Bakery. Pawn shop. Hotel. Help me, please. I'm sorry. You should search for answers somewhere else. Wow. The uh, first NPC I asked did indeed have a southern accent. Wasn't exactly New Orleans, but that's fine. And the second NPC in Chinatown did also have a different accent. That is extremely cool. Wonderful attention to detail. There it is. Locked. No one's here. Rather unassuming for a jewelry store. Damn, he at it again. Barnaby still owes you. If he can't pay in greenbacks, he'll pay in blood. Okay. Authenticated by Zoe Clemens. May I ask you something? I'm bone tired, but yeah, I'll help you. Uh, that was the money. He's a known alcoholic and is currently getting drunk at a local bar called the Giddy Gator in the Creole Quarter. Yellow hat, green jacket. I know exactly where that is because I saw the sign before. Oh. Now I can see finally what I... Oh, my... Goodness. Damn. Damn. Giddy Gator. This place... It's a Spartan charm, does it not? It does. My soul will always yearn for London's gloom, but it reminds me of Cordona in a nice way. I was about to say the same thing. <sighs> yeah. Giddy Gator, this way. Car tracks. Um... Oh, the amazing Alonzo! She made it. She made it to the U.S. and is a famous magician. Oh, that's... something. Um... I don't think this is... Oh, Katie! I don't think this is the right way, though. Is this way? Oh, we got a wanted poster. Jennifer Black, Widow Pritchett for... Baking and selling pies with human meat. Look, Watson. What have we here? That's a delicious. A star? You have a strange way with words. Frankly, we have more pressing matters. I'm not going after these troublemakers, but the posters will add nicely to my collection of criminal profiles. I read a study that suggests facial features can determine a person's tendency towards cruelty or deviant behavior. Well, you can't stop progress. Hello, piggy. Okay, why did the sign say Giddy Gator Bar and then, like, nothing? Oh, goose. Um, and now I'm lost. Is it here? No. What's this? Pelagi Brewery's Verdian Ale. Keep yourself... Keep yourself afloat. 
I mean, this is the bar. Oh, there he is. Barnaby, unconscious but with his eyes open. Look, Watson, the two of you are just alike. Oh, great! So I look like a haggard alcoholic. Yes, yes, that's what I meant. Um. Okay, there's the invitation. Eureka! What have you got? An idea. First, we'll need Mr. Barnaby's clothes. Holmes. Watson, time is of the essence. You will go to the bank, not as yourself, but as Frank Barnaby. Holmes, we look nothing alike. The hat and coat will do the heavy lifting. Just stay cool, play the part, and no one will notice the difference. Trust me. Holmes, must we really indulge in this farce? It worked in Switzerland, didn't it? Sure, if you redefine the word worked. I love this outfit. Amazing. Where's my cash, Frank? In the bartender's tip jar? I could really fuck up Frank's life now. But I won't. Mostly because it's not being presented as an option to me. I'm back. I got There's my... the money, Barnaby. Are you a wizard? I'll wait here so as not to arouse suspicion. Mr. Barnaby. Uh, right you are. Shop owner. Right. Your invitation, sir? Here you go. You okay, sir? Seem to have the jumps. I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm in a rush. Uh, come on in. Now, Watson gets to be the dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. I know last time I mentioned that uh, Alex Jordan uh, does the voice of Sherlock in this and in chapter one. Ten of them. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Um, anyway, yes, Alex Jordan does the voice of Sherlock. Does an amazing job, especially last time when he was pretending to be Sherlock, pretending to be the other guy, Cosby. Crosby. Um, Andrew Wincott does the voice of John Watson and uh, now gets to do the same thing. He also, by the way, does a fantastic job in the voice acting for this game. So. Heavens, I've never seen Jim so big. I simply must have them. Holy shit. They're so black, it's like they absorb light. Rather hypnotic. Yeah, they're pretty big. Black opal. Andreas Larson, Luke Bukowski. No pass. May I ask for your assistance? I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. Okay. Sorry, I'm just dealing with another client's request. Please wait a moment. Time for the old smash and grab. Could you help me? You better ask someone else about that. Just leaving money lying around. Oh. No pass. Oh. This might be useful. I'll make a note. Fine philanthropists. Not sure of the significance on that just yet, but maybe it will become apparent. Can't examine these? Alright, what am I missing? Oh. Now she's ready to talk to me. 
Morning, sir, and welcome to the E.W. Gray Banking House. The auction will begin shortly. Name's Zoe Clemens, and I'd be delighted to help you. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Clemens. I am Doc... Uh, Frank Barnaby. I do have some questions, if you don't mind. Okay. What is so special about these stones that you would these sacrifice people curious. to get them? What can you tell me about them? These rare beauties are black opals, all the way from Cooper Petty, South Australia. When they catch the light, the dark stone becomes a brilliant rainbow. It's something special. Forgive my curiosity, but who was the previous owner? Sir, I ain't at liberty to disclose them details. Could they be stolen, perhaps? It doesn't say where these stones came from. No provenance, no previous owner. I'm starting to suspect they were illegally procured. What? We would never. I can assure you these gems were bought from one of New Orleans' most upstanding citizens, a philanthropist no less. If you would like to know more, I could get my manager. You old dog, Barnaby. <laughs> Didn't think you'd sober up for the auction. An hour ago, you were three sheets to the wind. Oh, well, uh, you know, I hold my liquor better than most. And the auction was an important business opportunity. You'd maybe try an, an accent. An important business opportunity. Ha. What have you done with the real Barnaby? <laughs> well, maybe I'm drunker than I thought, mister. Mister? What's wrong, Frank? You're looking pale. Don't you recognize your old pal, Grub? <laughs> okay. Observe. Large wool hats. Sheriff. Sharpshooter. Cares for appearance. 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 Fashionable or hates getting dirty. Sheriff Grubb is actually a barking toothless dog. The man attempts to make the impression that he is an important figure in the life of New Orleans. Or he's just a small cog in a government wheel. Um... In our government machine. In fact, the, the sheriff feels so uncomfortable and displeased with his role that he tries to compensate with ridiculous tournaments, fashionable looks, and threatening behavior. Sheriff Grubb is the law in New Orleans. He's fairly eccentric, looking after his nails, appearance, and image. However, it is uh, just a cover for his true nature as a remorseless and highly powerful individual in the local community. Who uses his image to distract and disguise his true nature. Well, I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm not particularly threatened by him, so... I guess, I mean, I, but I also wouldn't mess with him. I don't see any reason to mess with him. Um, I don't know. He is the sheriff. He does have a, he does seem proud. Um, although walking around with a shooting medal on, I'm just going to go with the fashionable menace. I, I don't know. It, it's, it seems like it's fine. Of course I know you, Sheriff. Good. Now, while I have you, there's the matter of your outstanding fines. I've been more than reasonable, but I'm afraid the bills come due. Fines? Right. Uh, I I'm afraid I don't have anything on me. That's funny. Ain't you at the auction? I weren't born yesterday, Frank. Now, assault, battery, disorderly conduct, that's serious stuff. You got off easy, but if you don't pay up, things get a whole lot worse. Look, Sheriff, I'm not actually... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Think careful now, because Frank Barnaby only owes us cash. But fraud? Impersonation? That's weasel behavior. And you know what we do to weasels around these parts. Feed them to the gators. So, Frank, what's it gonna be? Here's all I have. Mighty fine of you. 
The people of this parish deserve peace. They don't take kindly to visitors. Don't miss that boat tomorrow morning, Doctor. Wow. He turned out to be far more menacing than he I expected him to be. Um, God, now what do we do? Upstanding city philanthropists. So, one of these guys. Back to the boat and change so as to avoid Barnaby's legacy. Okay. I told you, Holmes. I told you it was a bad plan. Now we're penniless and wanted criminals. Hysteria gets us nowhere, Watson. Tell me what happened. The sheriff saw right through me. He knew who I was from the start. Extorted me for every coin I had. Bah, all that matters is what you learned about the gems. I shan't discuss it while still wearing that blighter's clothes. I'm going back to the boat to get changed. Okay. How am I supposed to find ten of these things? May I ask you something? I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't help you. Well, here's one. Oh, I have to be Sherlock to pick it up, though. Okay. Fine. How the hell am I supposed to get back on? It's a staff only. A pox on the crew. Okay, where am I supposed to go? Pretty sure that was the one. Is it this boat? The Nymph of Louisiana Saloon. Always a pleasure to see you regular, Mr. Barnaby. Welcome home. Okay. Yeah, this is not where I parked my car. Um, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> okay, if it's not here and it's not the ship we came in on... Hey, you're like, oh, well, got a leaf figure back there. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Change into this clothes. These are my clothes. Oh, bollocks! Now our clothes are in the blooming water. Oh it was my like God! The luggage had legs of its own. Oh, Mr. Pratchett will have my head. I ain't sure what you did to the sheriff, but it must have been something real hairy to have him chuck your luggage off the pier. With respect, Miss, have we met before? If you were the real Frank Barnaby, yeah, we would have. But where are my manners? I'm Lucy. And you are? John, I didn't mean to be rude. I've just had a difficult day, miss. Well, it's barely noon. And you've already made an enemy in Sheriff Grubb. The man starves his gators just in case someone crosses him. John who? Watson. Well, Johnny, if you plan on sticking around, you better change that suit, or Frank's reputation will catch up with you. And then you'll be a John Doe. Alas, I think one of those gators is currently devouring my spare clothes. Oh, <laughs> you've got yourself in a fine pickle. <laughs> All right, come on board the Nymph of Louisiana, and I'll sort you something to wear. The Nymph? Is that 
what it sounds like. Why are you helping me? Well, let's just say you ain't the only one who's had run-ins with the sheriff. Way I see it, this city deserves better. Now quit your stalling and head on over to the Nymph. I'll be in room six. This Mr. Barnaby is proving rather useful. Perhaps you're not so different after all. One more word, Holmes, and I'll hand you over to the sheriff. Sorry, was that John talking or Frank? Oh, go annoy someone else while I visit the Nymph. That's <laughs> uh, a nice interaction between the two of them. Room six, one, two. Six. Well, look at you. All dressed up with nowhere to go. I can't thank you enough. As I was saying, our journey has hardly gone to plan. We seem no closer to finding our missing people than when we left. Hmm. Well, if there were anything to know, Champagne will know it. She's across everything in New Orleans. Look for her in the Fisherman's Village behind the Creole Quarter. Thank you again, Lucy. I shall make my way there now. Good luck, Johnny. Keep out of trouble. Okay, so I do most of my traveling here in New Orleans as John, but I can't pick up the flyers as John. Oh, forgive me, Watson. The difference is plain as day. What a remarkable transformation from Barnaby. If we're critiquing wardrobes, Holmes, maybe you can explain why you used to roll just one sleeve up to <laughs> get bored halfway through. <laughs> Alright, it's lampshading, but they called it out. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Quite a bit. <laughs> Alright. Oh, missing. Okay. People missing here too. Our ship leaves tomorrow morning. No room for sightseeing then. Okay. What was that guy's name? Some towel. Okay. Gotta find champagne in the Creole quarter. Brian the Impaler Matucci. Wow. That's two. All right, what time are we at here? Yep, good enough. That'll be it for this part. Next time we're going to go look for champagne in the Creole Quarter. Thoroughly enjoying this. Excellent so far. Can't wait to continue. I just don't have time. So... Come join me next time. Until then, take care, have a nice day, and we'll see you next time.